so with that, we have got the incredible, the legend that himself, the ISPO Cup winner, Killian Jornet. Killian, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. And um, I got it. Hey, what, what am I holding then? How do you, what, there's two of them? We, we, we... We are in a in a dimension connection actually now. <laughs> uh, Killian, it's it's so nice to see you again, and I know you've been watching little bits of ISPO. Uh, last time that you were on, we saw your uh, movie. We got some insights about you, and people had so many questions, and we ran out of time. So what we're gonna do is Killian has been so kind to join us again this morning to share his thoughts about the foundation and what he's doing, and then. Hopefully we will have time for questions. So for everyone who's watching, go on Slido, ask these questions, uh, and then Killian, whenever you're done speaking, call me back in, and then we'll do a little bit of interaction with our audience, okay? Perfect, yeah, I, I will do a short, uh, short speech, and then we have a lot of time for, for uh, questions. So actually, I'm so happy that uh, today ISPO is doing so many talks and workshops on sustainability, and that's important because we are the industry that is closest to contact with nature. We are the ones that we are facing uh, more rapidly also the effects of that uh, in the practice, in the market, in health, of the climate change, of the human action uh, on, on nature. So it's important that ISPO is bringing that subject and I'm so happy that they are dedicating a full day talking on, on sustainability and putting sustainability on priority number one before business, before growth, before social, before anything. Because all these other topics will be affected seriously in the middle term or even in the short term if today we don't take care and we do a global transition into a sustainable society. So it's so, so good that ISPO is taking these subjects seriously and to put it really in the agenda. Uh, and I believe that for making this transition real, cooperation is key to make the outdoor sports sector stronger, to make sport stronger, is to be able to work all together. All the stakeholders, brands, like all the ones that they are in ISPO, the athletes and practitioners like me, event organizers, institutions and federations, foundations, associations, we are all part of the outdoor world and we need to create synergies and then accelerate the transition towards a more sustainable model. I come from a sports background, like I started competing and racing when I was a kid, and I started uh, collaborating with different brands for gear development, for um, personal challenges, and also promoting other sports. And I have been seeing uh, in the last 15 years, not only how the environment, how the, the mountains, how the glaciers has changed because of action, but also how much more importance we do to that. We, today, we have a much more scientific research that tells us what we need to do, what we need to change for that. And that's something that we didn't have 15 years ago. So today, we don't have excuse to make this transition because we know what we need to do. We know what the scientists tell us that uh, we need to, to achieve in terms to be sustainable. So it's not an excuse for us today to say, we don't know what to do. And on that, last year, actually, I, I launched the Killian Journey Foundation. The foundation was mostly that I wanted to use my, my spare time, and I wanted to use my voice and my strength, and to bring people together to work on, on sustainability, to work on preserving the mountain environments. And actually, one of the first projects we did with the foundation was the Outdoor Friendly Pledge. That was not only a, a eco-responsible pledge with different goals for the, the different outdoor sport players like athletes and uh, brands and federations and events, but it was mostly also a platform of sharing ideas, sharing ideas on uh, tips, concrete measures, actions to achieve all these goals that they were focusing on different topics like climate change resilience, like biodiversity preservation, pollution, circularity, consumption, health, etc. And I got very amazed by what a few are doing. Some of the brands had incredible programs on repurposing, great initiatives on promoting responsible consumption, or simply changed footprint, packaging, etc. 
it was amazing. Like the ideas there, it was incredible. So I am very thankful and I thank all the brands for the effort they are doing. And this is the first key to transition, to share ideas, to share the know-how, the technologies and the methods to the others. It demands a lot of time and investment on developing both. But I'm proud that the outdoor sector, when it comes to sustainability, it's often putting the ability to these resources in front of the business, in front of the profit. And that's something that we should be proud of it. And as I said, you guys have incredible initiatives that they are often in the shadow. And they are often in the shadow because, unfortunately, is not enough connection between all the parties to go from, wow, that's a great experiment, that's a great initiative, to become the model, to become the norm. And from going from the experiment to the norm, it takes time. It takes time and a time that we might be running out of it. Uh, if we think about recycling, for example, it took years and diversity of efforts to make recycling something normal. It came from a change, the waste management, uh, the waste uh, management services to creating recycling plans, uh, implementing like the local waste uh, collection service, then campaigns in the public to to promote the importance of recycling. Like, I don't know where you are from, but I'm sure that each of you know some kind of melody that have been seen in the radio or the television about where the glass, uh, which beam goes the glass, which beam goes the, the plastic. So it took years to change from uh, the, the landfill uh, waste to the recycling uh, system. And we need to do that uh, on many different subjects. And that's something that I think that if we work together, all the different parties, we can do it. Uh, as I said, like it's a lot of great initiatives. Uh, we can see that uh, industry has been doing a great progress in circularity. It's more and more use of recyclable materials, modular gear, or sustainable sourcing. I think it's on panels later on today on that. But we often, um, the recycling, it often, it often don't go to the end. And that's because the consumer doesn't know where to bring this piece of gear that has this kind of materials, or uh, it's complicated to, to go to this place to recycle, or he doesn't know where to find the re replacing parts. And at the end, uh, it goes to the landfill. So this well-thought circularity from, uh, from the brand, uh, it tends being a craft to grave. So the product goes to the landfill. And that's not the consumer's fault. That's not the, the industry fault, that's not the brand's fault, is that we are focusing more on what we can do individually than uh, the connections we need to build the system work. That's normal, because we don't have much time. It happens a lot for all of us that we have a great idea and we put on the box of like things to do, uh, and then uh, we have this uh, meeting or uh, we need to go training or we need to solve this uh, problem from yesterday. And uh, we, we work just on the day by day on solving problems in the moment. So we cannot have the time to, to look a bit the bigger picture and find these connections that makes not only individual solutions, but that makes the system to change. And I believe that's what we need to do now is to, to talk about, uh, about how we need to do this transition. Uh, as an example, we are talking about social media about uh, biodiversity protection. Uh, we all post pictures from the same locations, encouraging people to go there. And that's a problem because then it ends that it's uh, overcrowded in this uh, specific place. Uh, and then we have a, a business model from working from Monday to Friday, from nine to five. And we have all the same weekends and the same holidays. So uh, we find like that we end everyone at the same time at the same locations. And that's not good for the, um, for the environment. So instead of uh, talking about biodiversity, that it's very important too, we should also be thinking about uh, how we should change the working schedules, how we should change the working and the, the economic model to be able to, to work differently and not to have these problems of overcrowding. Another big problem, I think, is uh, it's a carbon footprint. We are the outdoor um, sector. We are the ones that we love nature the most. In a study from um, uh, 2018 from Palmela Wicker here in Germany, they noticed that the sports outdoor practitioners had the higher environmental consciences 
between people. They were the most aware about the, the need of protecting them. But they had a 40% greater carbon footprint from practicing, and that's because of transport. So we should think also together, brands, athletes, federations, institutions, how we can solve that, how we can promote more local activities, but also when we design calendars like racing uh, competitions, the model of competition haven't changed for the past uh, 15 years, is to bring a group of, of people to different locations in the world doing the same activity. And that's great for some things, but uh, it's uh, not very good for the environment. So I think we need to go all together and to, to find a good, not solution, but a good transition towards doing a sport greater, to doing a sport greater for, for us as humans, but also for the planet. And we can find a lot of different uh, examples like that. Uh, if we think about sustainability, we can think about uh, carbon footprint, we can think about uh, uh, pollution, we can think about biodiversity. So it's a lot of different topics that uh, we can see a lot of great individual initiatives, but uh, that we need to create more deeper connections between all, all the different players to be able to really do a transition. So that's we are here today. When we are talking about sustainability, we are not talking only about how we will make our goods with a lower uh, environmental footprint, but how we can change the model on these all different areas. And that's a huge transition. I believe that we are the outdoor sector. We are the ones that we are closer to nature. We are the ones that we are closer to seeing the effects that we have on the planet. So we have not only the role to be doing this transition, but we have the opportunity to be leading this transition. I think uh, as outdoor sports sector, we, we are doing great. Uh, we've been seeing these days uh, super good initiatives from all the brands. And I think we can work all together and push a step forward so we can lead this transition and be the example, be leading other sectors to doing this, um, this uh, sustainable transition on the world, on all the topics. So I count on you guys, I count on all the brands, I count on the federations, on the sports events, on the athletes and practitioners. It's, all, it's our role to work together and to be leading this, uh, this sustainability subject. So thanks, ISPO, for what you are doing to put sustainability on the first page to make the priority number one. And thanks to all the players here, all the brands, all the people attending for working together and to make this happen for real. So that was my introduction of the day. I hope um, that uh, you will have a good uh, speech today. It's a lot of work. Uh, Shops are very interesting. Uh, you were mentioning the Green Deal Party, you were mentioning Blue Sign, and it's many more others. So I, I encourage people to go listen to them because we will learn a lot and we will be able to start these conversations that we need to make uh, this transition happen. Kilian, can you hear me? I hear you well. Thank you so much for setting a beautiful standard as to what can be done and even giving some new ideas as to how things should happen. Uh, no doubt. Uh, so, I, first of all, I need to give you some praise because it's always nice to be encouraged, right? So, people love having you on here. Uh, I think some people may have missed the fact that you are the ISCO Cup Award winner because there's a bunch of people all the way from Hong Kong and Thailand all saying, congratulations, congratulations. And then we have a comment here that says, thank you for your incredible dedication and being such a great role model. And then we have Marcel, who I believe is a volunteer with KJF, because Marcel says, don't forget to become a KJF volunteer, everyone. I'm trying it, it's fun, it's easy, and also doesn't require much time. Um, and that's the strength of the sports industry working together. So I just wanna say that what you are saying is really inspiring people and getting them thinking this morning about what they can do when it comes to sustainability. So now, Killian, you ready for some questions? I'm all yours. <laughs> okay, well, you're all the audiences. These are the questions that are coming in from the audience. So one of the questions is, um, what is one thing that you would like all sports brands and retailers to do in terms of sustainability? What's one thing you want them to start doing right now? 
Well, it's, it's a lot of things we need to do, but uh, probably one of the focuses uh, today for the industry would be to, to focus on the supply chains, uh, because uh, I think most of the brands, they have done uh, an amazing work about uh, development, about products, and we know that the 90% the of the carbon footprint uh, when it comes to industry is it's not on the headquarters, but it's on, on the supply chain. Uh, system. So I think that's that's the next step to take to, to really make the same standards on that. Uh, so the footprint it really decreases. But as I said before, it's also working together to create these synergies. So it's not only like uh, this brand is doing this good thing or this other brand is having this good product or this uh, program, but saying, OK, in the future, what will be the sport, uh, the, the model of uh, circularity? So we need to think not only about this uh, brand doing that, but on like how the system is encouraging like uh, the the new market. So like uh, how is the consumption? How is uh, the circular? Not only circular products, but circular business, circular economy. So uh, I would say focusing on the system, mm -hmm. uh, how to change the system to be able to 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 make these examples uh, uh, the norm, and also to focus on the supply chains. So the question, the next question actually does refer to the circularity and what they're saying is you are a true role model when it comes to sustainability in the sports world. How can we get this to be in other industries, say for example fashion? Do you have any ideas how we can start thinking around like circularity models even in other industries like fashion? Yeah, and, and I believe that um that's uh, probably it's pretty hard on on outer sports industry because we are working a lot with technical products that they are made from uh, different materials so it's it's even harder to recycle them uh, we need to think harder on like how to produce to recycle them because they are built with uh, with a lot of different layers of, of uh, complicated materials. Uh -huh. So uh, for, um, for fashion, for example, it should be easier because uh, the technology behind the products is, is lower. So when we talk about circularity, we, we are thinking always about uh, source materials. So where we can get these source materials coming from, from recycling, for example, we are talking about uh, how to make this system, like to collect this product to, to get back. But we are also talking about um, another uh, business model, I would say, is not only to, to make the life of the product going around, but it's also making uh, the use of this product going around. So like uh, we are talking about not only buying uh, like yearly collections that they change every year just for, for, may, for accelerating consumption, but we need to think about other um, business models like second hand, like uh, renting, like um, uh, sharing products. So uh, I think we need to bring that also into the table, not only for, for sports goods, but for everything. So just mm -hmm. how to make this circularity on both the product life, but also the, the use of the, of the product. For sure. Now, on a more personal level, uh, this question was, how do you justify the jet setting around the globe, all you're flying, uh, f you know, for the engagements as well as the environment? Now, I had the benefit of watching your insights with Killian, so I know that you are measuring your carbon footprint, and I think you had made a donation. I do this, the same when I'm flying. I kind of calculate what roughly my carbon footprint is, make some kind of donation. Do you have any thoughts on a personal level for people who feel, well, we have actually activities that are not carbon neutral any suggestions what they can do to be more sustainable yeah first is like to to find what what can you do like for example as an athlete i made the the commitment for myself to to only travel what it makes three tons of uh, co2 emissions and that's a lot but mm. that's what i feel that i can do uh today and uh, that means to reduce a lot of the travels like not to go for a race because I can do it, but only to travel, to take a plane when it's something that is an exception. Uh, so that means to reduce my, my flying a lot during the year. Uh, it's great today we have tools like uh, to do a video conference instead of like traveling for, for doing a meeting. So yeah. like to, to accelerate these things uh, and also to find, to find where you are comfortable and wh where you can do to reduce all these things, to think twice before doing an action and and then, like uh, to push the the industries to to 
to find other ways of traveling to i know that some um some airline companies they are working well on on trying to reduce the carbon emissions and to to investigate other other uh, methods so i think we need to reduce our individual footprint and of course compensate when we are doing a travel and push uh, these companies uh, to to find better ways to travel until until then we need to reduce our footprint so here's a final thought for you killian unfortunately we're running out of time but um We've got some people from uh, all over the world that are really complimenting what you're saying. Uh, Zita says, wise words. Thanks for putting this important message out there. Cannot be said enough. Here's one last question. Who is on your dream team of brands, organizations, or individuals who you feel are already leading the change when it comes to the outdoor sports segment? Is there any like best practice or case study where you're like, oh, these guys are just so good? I think... Uh, I think, uh, as um, uh, you mentioned before, volunteers, and I think it's people, it's everyone, it's it's coming from the mass. And of course, it's, it's good um, uh, good leaders of the sport, like uh, brands that, that they are doing a good uh, good subject. And, and you will be talking a lot today with uh, different brands and, and different um, uh, sectors like uh, Blue Sign and like B Corps and things, and you can look. You can go to the other friendly pledge and see what are brands doing. But I believe it comes from the people, it comes from the volunteers, that they want to make the transition and they are pushing uh, everyone, all the brands, to to push hard. And it's not about these people is the leader of the transition, right. it's the people, it's everyone that is pushing for that. Killian, you are a wise man. In addition to being an athlete, if you ever decide to be a philosopher uh, or a president, I'd vote for you. Because uh, that is such an incredible <laughs> answer that, you know, everybody has no, to be no. part of the change. And actually, you said something the other day in the rapid fire round that has stuck in my mind. You probably have forgotten it, but I said, what's your greatest accomplishment? And the answer you said was tomorrow. And I was like, that is so deep. That is amazing. So thank you for being so wise, so kind, so generous generous, so humble, and so accomplished. Thank you for joining me this morning. Really appreciate having you here. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks, everybody. Have a good day in ISPO. It will be super interesting, all the, all the workshops today. Enjoy it.